In today's video, we're going to be having a look at the setup and install of Home Assistant on the Argon One M2 case. Check it out. What's going on guys? I hope you're all doing well. In this video, we are indeed going to be going through the setup and install of Home Assistant on the Argon One, but I'm also going to be going through the migration process. So if you've currently got Home Assistant set up on an SD card or a similar setup, and you want to move over to the Argon One, then I'll have you covered with this video. And if you're watching this thinking, what's an Argon One? Then let me show you. So that was a quick look at what the Argon One is. Now let's have a look at what we need in order to set this project up. First of all, you're obviously gonna want the Argon One M2 case. Now this case might seem a little bit pricey, but if you compare it to other cases on the market and you look at everything you get with the Argon One, I think it's quite reasonable. With the case, you obviously get this stylish metallic design. The case houses an M2 SATA SSD to USB 3 expansion board meaning everything's enclosed inside of the case. In addition to this, you get a video and audio PCB extender, which swaps the two micro HDMIs to two full-size HDMIs. As well as all of those things, you also get my favorite feature of the Argon One, which is the GPIO fan PCB hat. The power hat adds some additional features. You get a programmable 30 millimeter fan, a programmable IR receiver, a multifunctional power button, and some color-coded GPIO pins, which are covered by a magnetic fin. To go with your Argon One, you're also going to need an M2. In this video, I'm going to be using the 128GB Lighton CV8. It's personal choice for whichever M2 that you get, but I wouldn't recommend spending loads on a super fast, high capacity NVMe drive, just because you're not going to be able to utilize it fully with the Pi. So something low capacity, cheap and cheerful will do just fine. To actually install Home Assistant on the M2, we're going to need some kind of peripheral to actually write to the M2. For this video, I'm using an M2 to SATA connector, but because I'm using this connector, I'm then going to have to use a SATA to USB 3 connector in order to plug it into my PC. You don't have to use those parts, you can just buy an M2 to USB 3 adapter, but those are just parts that I had lying around, so I'm making use of them. I'll have links to recommended parts and also all the parts I've made use of in this video in the description below. Next up, you're going to need a Raspberry Pi. With the Argon One M2, it has to be a Pi 4. In this video, I'm going to be making use of the 4GB model. I'm also going to be using the official Raspberry Pi USB-C power supply. So choose your Pi 4 model and make sure the power supply you're using is going to give it enough power. We're also going to need an SD card, which is going to be used just to update the Raspberry Pi. Now, if you're currently migrating your Home Assistant from an SD card to the M2, then this is going to be an additional SD card to that one. The SD card can be any size or any brand. It doesn't matter too much as we're only using it to update the Pi and after we've updated the Pi, we won't use it again. If your computer doesn't have an SD card slot, you're also gonna need a peripheral to actually write to the SD card. For this video, I'm just using a USB 3 card reader. There'll be one bit of software that you need, which is the Raspberry Pi Imager. There'll be a link for it in the description below, so go download and install that now. And the last thing that you're gonna need, if you're not already, is to just hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. And if you've got all of those things, then you're good to go. So let's get on with the project. Before we get started setting up our M2, we're gonna first need to make a backup of our Home Assistant. Now this step only applies if you're currently running Home Assistant and you wanna migrate it over to the M2. If you're not migrating Home Assistant and you're just setting up a new instance, be sure to make use of those timestamps in the description below. And if you're sticking around, I'm guessing that you're doing a migration. So let's go ahead and do that now. In the left-hand menu there, let's click Supervisor. 
and then up at the top we're going to choose snapshots and from here we're just going to click create snapshot in the bottom right there we then need to create our snapshot which is going to be the backup of our home assistant so let's start by giving it a name once you've named your snapshot you're going to need to choose what type it is so it can either be a full snapshot or a partial snapshot the full snapshot is going to be a complete backup of your Home Assistant. A partial snapshot is going to allow you to choose what you want to include in that backup. So you can choose individual folders and individual add-ons. For this demo, we're going to be using the full snapshot. The last option then is password protection. This is going to allow you to encrypt your Home Assistant backup by using a password. I would recommend you do this because it's going to stop anyone being able to access and view your Home Assistant information. But for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to leave the password blank and I'm just going to choose create. Once that's done, you're going to see the snapshot that you just created appear in this list. We're just going to select it. On the pop up, we're going to press the three dots in the bottom right corner. And we're going to press download snapshot. We then just need to choose where to save the snapshot to. To keep it simple, I'm just going to store it on my desktop. With that saved to the desktop, we can just X out of this. We can then choose system and shut down host. Once the Pi is shut down, you can just unplug everything ready to move on to the next step. You're now going to want to plug your M2 into your PC using whichever adapter or connector you chose and open up the Raspberry Pi imager. With the Pi imager opened up, we're going to click choose OS. We're then just going to scroll down and we're going to click other specific purpose OS. In that list, we should see Home Assistant, so we're just going to choose that. And we should have two options here, and we're going to want to make sure we choose the Raspberry Pi 4 version. Next, we're going to just press Choose Storage, and we're going to select our M2 drive. If you've got other peripherals plugged into your computer, make sure you're choosing your M2 drive, as when you click right, it's going to format that drive. If you're happy with all of your options, go ahead and press right. It will then pop up and tell you that the drive's going to be erased, and we're going to just press yes. You then just need to give that a minute to write Home Assistant to the M2. Once that's done, we'll get a pop-up to tell us that it's complete. We can then remove the M2 from our machine. While we've got the Pi Imager open, we may as well write the SD card. So plug your SD card into your machine now. With our SD card plugged in, we're going to choose Operating System. And we're going to scroll all the way down to the bottom. We're then going to choose Misc Utility Images. And we're going to select Bootloader. And from here, we want to choose USB boot. With USB boot selected, we're going to choose our storage device and we're going to select our SD card. We then just want to hit right. And again, we're going to press yes to erase everything. Again, just give that a couple of minutes and when it's complete, you'll get a pop-up to tell you that the SD card can be removed. The purpose of creating this SD card is to update our Pi's bootloader. This is going to tell the Pi to boot from a USB device rather than the SD card. If we didn't do this, the Pi would never boot to a USB device. We're now ready to update the bootloader on the Pi. To do this, we're going to just insert the SD card into the Pi and power it on. After a few seconds, the Pi will have updated and you can safely unplug it. On the Pi, there's not a visual indicator for whether the update's finished or not, so just leave it for a few seconds before you unplug it. If you plug an external monitor into the Pi, when the Pi's finished, the screen will go green. With the bootloader updated, we're going to start assembling our Argon 1. The first thing we're going to do is to insert the M2 and we're going to screw it down into place. With the M2 secured in place, we're going to attach the video and audio PCB to the Raspberry Pi. All you do here is just match up the port and connect them together. Once those two are attached, we're going to connect them to the top part of the case and screw it in place. Once they're attached to the top of the case, we're going to attach the bottom case and again screw that in place. The case is now complete and everything should be attached. The last thing we need to do is just add the USB 3 dongle. We can now plug all of our cables in and boot up the Pi. Once you've got everything plugged in, we're going to head over to the web browser where we're going to access Home Assistant in order to start configuring everything. To do this, we're going to enter homeassistant.local colon 8123 once you hit enter it's going to take you to a page like this if for whatever reason it doesn't then you're going to need to connect to home assistant using your pi's ip address if you're not sure what your pi's ip address is you can look this up in your router config we'll then just need to wait a few minutes for home assistant to finish installing 
When it's finished installing, it's going to give us the option to create an account or to restore Home Assistant using a snapshot. If you're doing a clean install of Home Assistant, you're now done and you're free to just end the video here. If you are ending the video, make sure you hit that like button and press the subscribe button if you haven't already. That way you'll be alerted to any future videos that I do. And if you're sticking around for the migration process, you've now got two options. We can either restore the snapshot from here by clicking on this link here. It's then going to get us to upload the snapshot and then Home Assistant will try and reboot and install that snapshot. The other option is to create a brand new account and once you've created that account, you can upload the snapshot and restore it. Now it's up to you which method you go for. Personally, I prefer to create an account because if there's any issues with the snapshots, at least you can have a look at the log then and find out what's the issue and what's causing the problem. So just go ahead and enter any information here. It doesn't really matter as we'll be removing this account when we actually restore our snapshot. So enter those details and just press create account. And again, with the discovered devices, we're just going to hit finish. And there we go, that's Home Assistant set up and installed on our Argon One. But we're not quite finished yet as we still need to restore our snapshot. So let's go ahead and do that now. So on the left hand side there, we're going to choose Supervisor. And then up at the top, we're going to press Snapshots. And again, in the top right there, we're going to click the three dots and we're going to choose Upload Snapshot. We then just need to select the snapshot that we saved and downloaded earlier on. Now I put mine on my desktop, so I'm just going to select that there and I'm going to press open. And that will just take a minute to upload to Home Assistant. Now, depending on the size of your snapshot will determine how long it's actually going to take to upload. Mine was quite small as it was only 31 meg, so it was pretty instant. And I can see in the background now that that snapshot in the list and it's now asking me if I want to restore that. So I'm going to press full snapshot here and I'm going to press restore. And we'll get a pop up to tell us that this is going to wipe our system. And again, we're not bothered about this current account, so we're just going to press restore. We can then see in the bottom left there that it says connection lost and it's reconnecting. We now just need to give Home Assistant a few minutes to actually restore the snapshot. And once it does, it will come back to life and it should be our previous working version. So I've just left this for a few minutes to do its thing and the browser's actually refreshed itself. And I can see now it's just asking me to log in. So I'm now going to need to log in with the account I previously used to access my Home Assistant. So let's go ahead and do that now. So it's taken me back to the page I was previously on, which was the snapshots. And I can see that it has already worked because I can see hacks in the side there. But if I press this overview at the top, I can see all of the things that I previously had on my old version. And if we just have a quick check around and go into say configuration, integrations, I can see all the integrations that I previously had on this version. And if we go back into configuration and open up say automations, I can see any automations that I had there and they're now also running. So at this point, we've managed to migrate our old Home Assistant across to a new version, and it's now all contained in the Argon One. I've got one last thing to show you, which may be of use to some people, particularly if you've moved from one Raspberry Pi to another, so say a four gig version to an eight gig version, and that's just to set our IP to the existing one. So some integrations may be expecting a specific IP, or maybe you need a set IP for say your MQTT broker or something like that. Let's just quickly do this now. So in the left hand menu there, we're going to press supervisor. We then want to go up to system up at the top. And in the third card here under host, we'll see IP address. We're just going to press change. And at this point, you're going to want to set the IP address for whichever network setting you're using. So for example, in this one, we're using ethernet. So I'm going to press IPv4 and I'm going to choose static. You're then going to want to update this IP address to be the previous IP address that your Pi used. And you can then just press save and just restart your Pi. And there we go. That's Home Assistant set up and installed on an M2 running inside of the Argon One case. In the coming weeks, I've got a few more Home Assistant build videos planned. So if there's a particular build you want to see, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you're interested in seeing a sneak peek of some of these, or maybe you want a little behind the scenes, make sure to be following me on my other social media platforms. If you're after any extra help or advice, I've got a Facebook group set up where you can go and post some screenshots there and ask for help. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future videos that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my patrons. If you're interested in joining these awesome dudes, then there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. And that's just about all the time we have for this video. So thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.